<laughs> this happened about 10 years ago. I was 14 or 15 at the time and working night shift with my mom delivering papers. I was having a lot of unexplainable things happen to me. One place we delivered to was beside an old park that no one played on anymore, and I always saw a little girl on the swing. The first time I saw her, I was really concerned. She looked no more than four or five, and it was about 2 a.m. I told my mom, but she said no one was there. Just to make sure, though, Mom had me stay in the van, and she went to walk through the park. She saw no one. Fast forward about a month or so, I'd gotten very used to seeing this girl, sometimes on the swing, sometimes walking around. I wanted to know who she was, so I did research on the area. Nothing. At first, she gave off that innocent lost girl vibe, so I thought maybe she was a missing kid who met a tragic end. So more research. This time, missing or murdered children from the whole city and the towns around it. Again, nothing. Slowly, I started feeling uneasy when I saw her. She no longer felt like a child. She felt old and something was definitely not right. I started getting bad headaches every time I saw her. Started getting sick and very weak as well. At one point, I was so weak and dizzy, I couldn't stand on my own for almost two days. My mom, who is not religious at all, started to get very worried and called a church asking for help. They suggested that we pray and ask God for guidance. In all likelihood, they thought I was just a troublemaker making stuff up. Well, that didn't do anything. Things got worse. One night, my headache was so bad, I told mom to take me home. I couldn't see it hurt so bad. At the time, we lived about a five minute drive from the park. So she drove me home and my brother went to work with her. My sister stayed up to take care of me. Nice cold cloth on my forehead and made sure it was dark and quiet. I finally passed out on the couch and she went upstairs to bed. Dream time. What felt like only a few seconds after I fell asleep, I hear a blood curdling scream come from my sister's room. I opened my eyes. All the lights were on, but I didn't care. Screw the headache. I booked it upstairs to my sister's room. Only I wasn't in my sister's room. I was in the van at the park. Confused, I look around and see my sister standing about 10 feet in front of the car. It started pouring rain, so I yell at her to come inside the van. She comes to the passenger side of the van and she's not my sister anymore. She's the little girl on the swing. She smiles, looks me dead in the eyes, and in the most evil sing-song voice I have ever heard, she said, I found you, and starts giggling. My eyes shoot open. I'm back on the couch. The lights are on, so I figure I'd been out for a while. I try to get up for a drink of water, and I could not move. I was in a form of sleep paralysis. I think I can hear that evil giggle again and start freaking out, trying with all my might to move, to yell, to do anything. Maybe about 30 seconds later, my mom comes rushing in the door, and I can move again. I rolled off the couch and screamed and cried. My mom said that ever since she dropped me off, she had a bad feeling and just needed to make sure I was okay. 
It had been about 20 minutes since she'd dropped me off. I told her about the vivid dream and now my mom was convinced something seriously bad was occurring. She called one of our good friends who was a Wiccan for help. I'll call her Jay. Jay said it sounded like something demonic, but not necessarily a demon. She said she would be over within a week. She lived a 12-hour drive away. The next night, I'm working with mom again, feeling like crap, but I was too scared to ask to go home again, much rather sleep in the van, which is exactly what I did. Now, what happened next, I have no recollection of. My mom said she let me sleep, got out, and when she came back, I was sitting up, smiling at her. She asked me why, and I started to giggle. She told me to stop because it wasn't funny. She said I stopped and looked at her, tilted my head, smiled, and said, I found her, she's mine now, and started giggling again. Mom freaked out and started yelling my name. Finally, I asked her why she was yelling at me after snapping out of it. I had a headache. Mom called Jay and told her what had happened. She hopped on the next flight over. She just called in to work. Originally, she was going to finish the work week and drive over the weekend. She did a blessing and smudging of my house in my room. She prayed to the goddess for protection. She did everything she could think of to protect me. Something worked. I haven't seen or heard this little girl since, and I'm very happy about it. I still don't know exactly what she was, demon or evil spirit. This story begins when I was a child, probably about seven years old. My mom and aunts threw a huge Halloween party for all the kids in the family. I think there were 16 of us at the time, ranging in age from probably 5 to 13. It was awesome, but the coolest part came about the time it just got really dark. We took a hayride to a cemetery a few miles down the road from my aunt and uncle's where the party was being held. My mom told us about some of the people buried there and how some of them were not resting in peace. Typical urban legend stuff. When we got there, the adults said they wanted us to show us the grave of an old man whose ghost was seeking revenge for his wrongful death. We were all scared and excited, creeping through the cemetery in the dark towards the largest tombstone. When we were about halfway there, my dad and uncles popped up from behind the graves, wearing scary masks. The kids all screamed and ran for the wagon while the ghosts and moms all laughed. For years, the adults retold this story, laughing over the details of our panicked faces and terrified attempts to get away. When I was a teenager, my sister and two of my cousins decided to get our moms back for this prank. Our parents got together once a month to play cards. So that October, we made sure we were around for card night. We waited until our fathers went for a beer run, which inevitably meant an hour or two at the bar. We told our moms about a legend we had heard about a sad ghost that could be seen weeping at her husband's grave when the moonlight hit. We made this story up and convinced them to take us to see it. My cousin secretly called his best friend who had agreed to go there in a mask and hide to scare them. The prank worked perfectly and our mothers nearly peed themselves. We all laughed hardly as we went back to our car. When we got to it, the car would not start. 
We laughed some more about the ghost sabotaging it and decided to walk where my cousin's friend had hidden his car. We would send our dads to get the car later, but of course, his car would not start either. We started to feel a little weird about this since neither car had problems recently. But what could we do? This was before everyone had cell phones, so we started walking towards the closest house, which was about a mile or two away. Though none of us knew them well, we knew the name of the people who lived there. As we walked up their long driveway, we started to worry because there were no cars parked by the house and it looked pretty dark inside. We knocked anyway, but got no answer. We were about to leave, not having nearly as much fun thinking we would have to walk the long distance to the next house when we heard voices coming from the back of the house. We went to the backyard looking for the people we heard, but it was pretty dark and nobody was around. We yelled hello a few times and identified ourselves, but got no answer. The backyard had a fair amount of trees and suddenly large branches started falling. This scared us since there was no apparent cause. In just a few seconds, at least a dozen branches bigger than your arm fell from the five or six trees closest to us. It was utterly crazy. We all ran for it. We were around the end of the driveway. My cousin screamed and pointed towards the house. It looked like several pairs of red eyes were peering around the house at us. We ran straight back to our car and tried it again. It started no problem. We did not stop at my cousin's friend's car. We went right back to the house. Later that night, my uncle and dad and cousin took his friend back and got his car, which also started on the first try. When they drove past the house, it looked completely normal, and there was a car in the driveway. We have never been sure if the people there saw us mucking about in the graveyard and decided to prank the pranksters, or if it was something else. If it was a prank, they put it together awfully fast and never laughingly confessed. We felt too foolish to ask. It was in 1971. I was in my late 20s. I was then staying in Rose Hill in a different country not married yet and staying at my folks. One day, my dad came home with a South African couple. He met them while coming back home, and they were tourists visiting Meredith with their back bags, tents, and sleeping bags. Meredith was still safe in that period, but independence was given by Great Britain in 1968, and a civil war had just come to an end a few months before. Two communities had fought for some political reasons. Anyway, my dad invited them home to sleep over for a few days. I remember the guy had a big blonde beard. He was very kind. His wife was as well, but I forgot her face. We decided to organize camping during a weekend on the west coast of Meredith. This place, which is now pretty developed, was at the time very wild with just a few houses. We went on a Saturday morning, found a nice place to put a tent, and organized the day. The South African man and his wife were very good swimmers and divers. We spent a lot of time in the sea, catching fish, crabs, some lobsters, which were getting scarce then, we don't find them anywhere by the coast, and cooked all these goodies on a small homemade barbecue set. All of us, mom, dad, the couple and I, really enjoyed the day. The sunset was beautiful. It was warm. We were in summer, 
and everything was perfect. When night came, we prepared a nice barbecue with chicken, beef, and pork, and a few shrimps we had caught earlier. The night was starry. My dad was happy and drunk, and the couple was obviously having a great time. Since we were not fluent in English, I was improving then. Communication was a bit difficult, but we could make ourselves understand with gestures and sometimes drawing on the sand. It was a great fun seeing my dad, trying to converse with them with a very limited knowledge of English. Anyway, it must have been around 9 p.m. We were all seated on the beach, watching the ocean as well as the starry sky by the campfire. It was so beautiful. Then we started to hear like a complaint. We couldn't determine the origin of the sound, but it was like a woman wailing. It was faint, but clear, since the place was wild and remote. The wailing was not constant, but would be heard from time to time. We put it on the sound of some sorts of animal. Since we were not people living on the coast, thus being ignorant of animals, which could be active at night. We were seated on the beach, facing the ocean, when suddenly, we noticed someone coming out from the sea, on our left, at about 30 to 40 meters away. It looked like a woman with a long white dress, just walking from the sea to the beach, we could not see her face, but could guess she had long hair. The only lights were the stars and our bonfire. She silently walked straight and disappeared from our view in the vegetation. We found this very odd. I knew it was not normal, but did not know what the others were thinking. My dad was drunk and watched the scene with a little smile on his face. I think he was lost in his thoughts. We all looked at each other and did not know what to think. I tried to check if there was a house where the woman walked to. I just stood up and walked towards the sea and looked on my left to see where she went. There was only green, bush, and trees. There were no lights or any constructions around. I was now scared because I was realizing that we must have seen a ghost. I walked back to the bonfire and sat and told everyone that I did not find any house there. We stopped talking and everyone kept alert. We could now hear all the little noises of the night. We heard faint crackling like someone or an animal quietly walking on dry leaves. Then, suddenly, we heard loud flapping noises on a tree nearby. It looked like large birds, pigeons or bats, flying away. It scared us. Then my mom told me quietly she felt that something was not right, and I and she were feeling watched. The couple was looking around with their glass in their hands. Then, suddenly, something heavy fell in front of us on the beach at about five or six meters. I stood up to see what it was, but could not find anything. Everybody stood up and looked around. Nothing was found, despite the fact that the night was clear and sweet. The atmosphere had changed, apart from my father, who was in a trip because he was too drunk. We were all scared by then. The couple talked between them, and I could not understand. They seemed quite concerned about the situation. I did not know what to do. Could we stay there, or maybe go to sleep, or maybe we had to leave? That was a pity. We were enjoying such a nice time before seeing that woman. Then, in the middle of the night, we heard this bone-chilling scream like a woman being attacked. 
It seemed close to our camp. We were on our feet, with eyes about to pop out from our sockets. My heart was pounding so loud that I thought others could hear it. The couple started to pick up their stuff, and my dad followed them. Mom and I packed away everything quickly. As we were doing so, some coconuts fell and rolled on our camp as if someone had thrown them away. We were now scared to death, and no one would talk. We heard running on the beach, then in the woods, but could not see anything. We quickly put stuff in the car, and it was not easy because we did not have a big car, and we had taken time to pack things so that they could fit in when we came down. Now we had to pile up things. The worst was the barbecue. It was hot and dirty, and we did not want to leave it. I burnt myself twice while trying to put it away. While we were packing away, things were happening around us. The screams seemed to originate from different places, and there was a lot of noises going on. We all got into the car practically, one upon the other with stuff on us. I decided to take the wheel because my dad was too drunk. As we moved away, we got a shock. We saw a woman dressed in white standing by the little lane looking at us. It was bone chilling. I stopped the car. She was standing about four to five meters away. I didn't know what to do. I was too scared to move closer to her, but it was the only way out. We waited a few minutes as she was standing there, staring at us. I heard my mom praying and the South African couple mumbling something between them. Suddenly, we heard a bang, like something hit the car behind. We all turned to see what had happened. The atmosphere was very tense, and I think my dad was becoming sober very quickly. He was now swearing. We did not see anything behind, but when I looked forward, the woman was not there anymore. But the scariest thing happened. She was now standing by my door, looking at me. I can't describe the utter fear which took hold of me then. I released a scream. My throat was sore several days after and pushed the gas pedal. I think everybody screamed then, but with panic, the car choked and the woman was still there, looking at us. I remember not seeing her eyes or features because it was dark. I switched on the car again and drove off as fast as I could. The poor car got shaken on the dirt road. We reached the main road, relieved and shouting. What the hell had we seen and experienced? Fortunately, Rose Hill is not far from that area we were just at. But when we reached the town, the car broke down. The fan belt of the car had broken and the engine stopped from overheating. We were in the 70s, no cell or anything like towing services available a Saturday evening. The couple and my mom walked home, which was not far. My dad and I stayed by the car. At home, mom phoned a friend of my dad, who was not staying far, to tow away our car. We finally reached home at around 11.30 p.m., completely exhausted. My dad's friend who had helped us was invited to have coffee, and we told him what had happened. He said that we were lucky because there had been accounts of people walking to the sea, like being in a trance and never coming back, getting drowned by possession, really scary and unbelievable. 
some would be hurt by objects being thrown at them. A woman apparently lost her baby while being pregnant. She was a few weeks away from delivery, but after coming to that place and seeing the ghost, she had pain in her tummy and started to bleed a few hours later. She had to go through surgery where they noted that the baby had died. These events would not always happen, but would take place randomly. The South African couple stayed two more days at home and left. We never heard or saw from them afterwards. I later discovered that there was a cemetery on the other side of the road. Not too close to the road, though. I never knew who that woman, ghost, was, but it seemed that regularly she would come out of the ocean and walk to the cemetery. However, in the late 80s, there was no accounts of seeing her up to today.